is it just me or do racing games feel like they're dying? It's what you'd like me to say, but that's so far from the truth. But don't get me wrong, there definitely seems to be a bigger than ever disconnect from games to player expectations. I thought I'd dive into the topic since obviously I'm out here in the trenches every single day figuring out my damn self anyway. Overall, we've had a pretty strong offering of titles from the start of the new console generation. Generally, creativity and variety in racing games is way up. This window being delayed due to COVID and like. But we've had games from Need for Speed Unbound to TT Isle of Man, F1 Manager to Lego 2K Drive. The Crew Motorfest to Forza Motorsport would have been a big ask just a few years back. But that sounds like a fantastic mix of games, right? So what's the deal with the all-time low racing game sales, crazy dropping off of players from day one? Well, here are some of my thoughts and my findings. Sony's focus on bigger games and IPs is an industry-wide shift. Sony has shifted its development focus to prioritize blockbuster AAA releases from studios such as Guerrilla Games, Naughty Dog, and Sony Santa Monica. Those games can cost tens of millions of dollars, but their success proves to be well worth the investment. That, however, has come at a cost. With the report explaining that Sony is no longer greenlighting smaller, more experimental projects at all, with their full focus being on the more large-scale blockbuster releases. So obviously, their idea here is to minimize risk, focus on big games, to cover as many bases as you can with the budget. This obviously will be copied generally throughout most publishers that exist. It was a reaction to the fact that most gamers are buying less titles and are focused realistically on buying big IPs, which is why I had a lot of Spider-Man and Last of Us 7. If people are going to trust a game, it's probably going to be a big IP name. But hell, that's likely why we got Hot Wheels, Lego 2K Drive, EA buying Codemasters for F1 and renaming Dirt to EA Sports WRC. They're pretty safe, big names, right? You have to do less building them with the Dirt series if you just go WRC. It's a known name. Now, personally, I don't think this is a great move. It limits creativity and in the sake of sports games, which unfortunately publishers put racing games in sports, making games that can be rehashed every single year, like EA Sports FC or F1, is absolutely perfect for them. Minimal dev cost, annual games, big money, big reliable payday. Games are more expensive and complicated to make. No matter who you are, a reality for everyone is the cost of living increase, which in return requires higher wages for all. Imagine your team of hundreds of thousands, those small increases in what they realistically increase your payment by. That's a hell of a lot of money when it all adds up. And that's completely ignoring the fact that games in general are more complicated than they were previously and previously before that and before that. That's something you can very much understand by looking at new versus old installments and how many of them are close together. GTA 6, for example, will have taken at least 11 years to develop from the previous. Vice City to San Andreas, they did that in two years. <laughs> What? Here's Xbox Game Studios Chief saying that games now take longer to make. I think the industry and the fans were a little behind the curve on a sort of reset to understand that the games aren't two or three years anymore. Specifically referring to high-end budget games, Booty, Boot, Booty, added that now they're four and five and six years. This requires devs and publishers to focus on less areas, putting out a reduced product. Because let's be completely honest. A lot of people look at racing games and think, wow, another car game. Round in circles and over and over the way that a lot of us look at Call of Duty. I think racing games take more effort than most games. Gone is the time where racing games are but graphic showcases at console launches. They've actually become so detailed and full that I think they've overtaken the complexity of most games, I'd argue. Recreating cars with insane poly counts, recreating real world locations with crazy details, creating and testing hundreds of layouts in multiple cars, allowing the combinations of tons of customization parts, simulating different movements and behaviors based on different performance parts, thousands of different sounds captured and simulated from engines to turbos to superchargers to gearboxes. Boxes, longer gears, shorter gears, less gears, more gears, no gears, 
and that's just the damn gears. While simpler racing games do still exist, extensive options and different feels per car is pretty normal for racing games. I'm not forgetting the cost and effort time for licensing the damn cars and customizations to each car in the first place. However, racing game publishers don't help themselves. Let's look at any Forza Motorsport event. Graphics, graphics, graphics. Why do I need to know about that? That's not your primary market. We do not care. Built from the ground up. Most of Forza Motorsport's game is hidden within menus on menus. I complained about this in Forza Horizon. I even didn't know about half the stuff in the damn game at launch. Most of you still don't. Forza Horizon can't stop itself from reducing the power of my dopamine, throwing everything at me all the time till I feel tired and drained. What if I like Need for Speed and I don't like rap? This man was hardly in the game. Why alien a huge amount of your audience with these really, really kiddie cutscenes in Hot Wheels Unleashed 2? I could have done without them. Look, I could go on and you could have your different opinions on them, but ultimately you get the idea. No, no game is perfect. But I still can't help and look back at say Need for Speed Heat trailer and still get the fizz. It knew its audience, it explained its point, and a lot of the audience bought the game, finding even more depth than they would have thought of. A simple idea, but fleshed out. Good cops, good story, great co-op, perfectly timed at the peak of the console's life cycle. What's that? Forza Motorsport before launch telling us that they're making the game insanely annoying to play? What? <laughs> That's an incredible effort. But it's not all on the devs. Higher than ever, player expectation. While not racing game specific in any way, a lot of these points are actually not racing game specific. Uh, here's an example that bothers me. People comparing Saints Row to GTA 5 clearly shows an insane disconnect with people's expectations and what's realistically possible on different budget levels. This isn't talking about how you like the story or not. I don't care. But in what planet can any game any game get close to GTA. If you've ever thought anything along those lines, I pray you jump on Google and get real. This is an interesting one that I was kind of thinking of. So here's a little example I wanted to bring up. Say hello to Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. No, not the old one, the new one. Now we all know the idea. You run around, you shoot people, you be shot, unlock new shooty, use new shooty, hate new shooty, repeat the cycle the idea. So let's go through these menus quickly and start upgrading some stuff. Here is an gun. Whoa. Amazing and gun. Uh, place piece on gun. One of 50 silence. I don't know, I do cards. Place an under barrel. Wow. <laughs> this is very different. Mm. Let's ignore the fact that these are some of the worst menus I've ever seen in Call of Duty history. In game history. That's the idea. Upgrade gun, put a piece on it. Great cool, run out, go out again and start shooty shooty bang bang all over again. Now we're playing Motorfest. Drive the car, upgrade the car, hate the car, try a new car, upgrade the car, you get the idea. The systems in these games are similar, but from totally different publishers and totally different budgets. Of course, Call of Duty sells a hell of a lot more. That's where it kind of takes me back a little bit because I'm kind of shocked at how much content is in the crew. When you consider they have to pay for the car licenses to be in the game too. So not all profit goes to the publisher or Ubisoft or whatever, but Call of Duty has worse microtransactions. It has less content. It's kind of insane to think about. It really just opens up your mind to think, actually, maybe we don't have it that bad. <laughs> but either way, these core systems in the games, as we just showed, the same from different publishers. But the problem overall is lack of creativity outside of this play style. Not just talking about racing games here. In the crew, you have two types of PvP, which are very fun. But where's my lap knockout that people have been asking for for decades for every racing game to add? Where's my need for speed takeovers? A, a fresh take on something a little bit different, something new, something fun. Where's my drag racing? Forza Motorsport, huh? What the f- The sad thing is a lot of these decisions are made by publishers and devs because people aren't playing those areas of a game but they also don't consider the fact that maybe they did such a piss poor job of it previously that they could have, you know, made it better. Or, and or, they implemented it in a hidden way to where people have no idea that the damn thing exists. They then assume nobody wants to play it and cut it completely for the next one. That's where we get Forza Motorsport. 
What the hell were they thinking? So overall, we get games doing less and less due to increased cost and then previously hiding the real gems behind menus on menus, resulting in nobody finding the damn things. Cheers, lads. So this has been a brain spill. Let's talk about it. There's a lot of issues in the industry as I've laid out, but none bigger than the total disconnect of publishers, developers, and the players. Closing studios due to one failed project that was highly influenced by the publisher's own decisions. Gamers jumping to conclusions and honestly just not understanding increased development time and cost. Games being more expensive and so resulting in careful decisions. Yet, a lot of people wanting fresh experiences, but then complaining when they're not the same as the last one. People actually complain about a wing effect on your cup. We can't do changes. We don't take it. We don't accept it. We don't want it. Publishers not advertising their games and being surprised when they fail to gain traction at launch. <laughs> there's a lot that needs to change and there's no one easy answer. Devs, publishers, players, we kind of all need to connect on a better level, I would say. Devs need to ask questions and players need to learn. No longer is it the norm for a game to release every single damn year. Back then, it would have been obvious if there was a change in what players want. It drop off wouldn't have been so aggressive. It's now taking many years for these games, which means they're likely to be behind the curve in some shape or form on go. I think this generation of consoles and games at the start has pulled a lot of people into many different directions, but I don't think we'll see such a broad catalog of racing games like this probably ever again, which overall is really sad, but let's start being more open. Let's communicate and listen. Let's get the games we want. Now, I do think a savior of all this will be smaller games. There's more creativity, smaller teams, so less headbutting within the studio itself, less expectations, and the crazy graphics kids are already nowhere to be seen from jump. Sure, they're gonna make some mistakes, some directions that you might not like, but they cost less. You can forgive them they can make changes and improvements generally quicker than anyone else. Oh, and another thing is that Sony is actually apparently changing their mind on the whole big game thing. They're gonna increase budgets into smaller games. Hooray! Give me Jack. But overall, please do support the games you love. Play them, get into the communities. There's something out there for all of us. And if you say there isn't, well, clearly that's on you because my God, this generation start alone has been wild. Thanks for watching.